first topic of the day. Is Ferris slash Felix canonically trans now? This was a thing that was talked about three years ago on the ReZero subreddit. But recently, you know, there's there's some new videos on it. Um, one by Jake Z123 and another by Natalie X Hunter. We're going to watch this one because it's shorter. It's recently resurfaced and I wanted to give my thoughts on it. So I don't talk about anime too, too much on this channel. I'm mainly a political VTuber, but there, this low key is like a culture war issue. It's, it's a bit political and I feel like there has just been so many cis voices, um, taking the spotlight when it comes to talking about this issue. And I am making this video only to give my opinion and give my perspective on this. Um, I'm not here to like cancel anybody or start a witch cult or to make anyone feel dumb or anything. I'm not, I'm just here to give my opinion. That is, that is the purpose in the beginning of arc four, I think it's arc five that this actually happens. Um, Ferris does say this male in body and soul. The issue, the issue with this is that there's just so many, there's just so many conflicting messages. The author himself is very ambiguous on it. And there's just, there's just a lot of speculation going on. And there's people that say Ferris is trans and people that say Ferris isn't trans. My take is that we have a situation where Ferris is simultaneously trans and cis at the same time. We have a Schrodinger's cat, a transgender, cisgender, tr like Schrodinger's cat situation where it is simultaneously both at the same time. In effect, Ferris could be gender fluid. Now, that's a that's a really big claim, and I'm going to need to do a lot to back that up. So um, I don't feel like there's much to look at here. We're going to look at some stuff. Here's some... Trappy Chan is a wonderful creator, does lots of fun, lewd content in the... EX Volume 1 light novel, which I do own and have read. It was translated by Yen Press, and I have spoken to Jake Z in the DMs about it, and he has mentioned that there is some um, mistranslations. I don't, it was a pretty chill conversation. I think, I think he's a pretty decent guy from what I've talked to him. Yen, Yen Press, um, they don't translate things right. So we have translation errors that makes this whole thing like even more confusing, right? There's just, there's just a lot, but we're going to look at the things that Trappy Chan has collected. So, um, we're going to read this. Ferris now 16 was a firm believer in the power of a person's will and faith. If you kept believing surprising things could happen, for example, he should have developed secondary sexual characteristics long ago, but as if in response to his daily wishes and prayers, he showed no sign of becoming more masculine. His voice grew no deeper and his body didn't thicken. He was quietly thankful to his ancestors that he didn't grow a beard. Um, so in effect in ReZero, Ferris wished consistently to not progress through male puberty. And when I read this, I was like, that's not a very cis thing to do. <laughs> There's also this line. The order of business in the morning was to address the reflection in the mirror. Cute, cute. I am a cute girlish young woman, a wonderful and cute girl. This is also not very cis behavior. And I'm pretty sure that this is very much like, canon there is no translation ambiguity this part is like really really canon 
for quite a long time now, this had been the mantra, the words repeated like magic. No, not like magic. They were magic for all intents and purposes. A magic spell was simply words that contained the power to change things, to affect the way the world worked. A vow to oneself that brought about the change that could be called nothing less. So, you know, there's, there's that passage. And then there is also this part in the book where Ferris is like, it's Ferris, not Felix. It hurts Ferris' feelings. So implying that Felix is a dead name. Okay, so I would, I would argue that this is like the strongest evidence for Ferris being a trans girl. Right. It, it looks pretty convincing. Um, but now we're going to watch an opposing view. Another misconception about ReZero, which circulates on the Twitter side of social media. Now, I understand this can be a sensitive topic, so I've made sure to get the opinion from people in the trans community before making this video. Felix obviously doesn't conform to gender norms, and I can definitely see the similarity between Felix and trans people. Specifically, the fact that trans people also do not conform to their assigned gender roles. Some information on the whole is Felix trans issue, which comes directly from the author that I thought would be good to share. So normally when this question comes up, people selectively cherry pick quotes from EX1, which is a prequel light novel involving Felix and Cruz. However, when they do this, they fail to analyze the actual overarching plot of the novel. In short, Cruz is a woman and women are looked down upon, especially when- So this character in with the green hair is Cruz and she has a very, strong relationship and connection with Ferris. Now there is a, there is a reason for that. And what Jake is going to explain is that they basically have taken upon each other's gender roles as a sake of like, it, he'll explain. Hold on. Let's just power. This is the reason why when you see Krush at the Royal Selection, or in general, she's wearing clothes which are very masculine. Essentially, she is disassociating herself with femininity because it's seen as being weak. Since Krush has thrown away her femininity, Felix then dresses feminine for Krush's sake. So this is the overall reason why Felix dresses feminine, because he is taking up Krush's femininity, which she can't embrace, and Krush... The thing is, the thing is, Krush does embrace her femininity at certain parts in the story. There are moments where she's wearing a dress. She hasn't completely thrown away her femininity. And I would argue that Ferris, based on what I've seen and read of the character, prefers to wear their dress and their feminine attire and they don't like it when they have to wear the knight's uniform that is a bit more masculine presenting. That's, that's my interpretation and that's what I think. And that's okay. It's okay if we disagree. It's literally not an issue. Um, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to keep watching on this one is being masculine for the sake of Felix. Despite that though, there's more evidence in the series that Felix is a man. This stems not only from the author himself, but also from Felix, the character. So first, I want to address the author's statements. In the ReZero data book, Felix is stated to be a male. Now, the image is in Japanese, but Ice from Witch Cult Translations has confirmed that Felix is classified as a male, and this is the source image if you would like to read it. Secondly, Tape has been asked about Felix's gender multiple times in Q&As. First, he states that Earlier, I had his actual name, Felix, in my head and thought, isn't that a really cool name somehow? That's his real name, but it just doesn't quite fit right for a cute sort of character. And once I'd gone with Ferris, it turned out to be a cute name, despite being incredibly simple. 
that Felix is a guy as he refers to him as a he rather than a she. Furthermore, he stated that the reason why he made Felix a guy but wearing girl clothes is because it was something he... It is... It's a thing I wanted to try. I have nearly as many things I want him to do as I do for Subaru. So Ferris suffering, Ferris is suffering. will continue on after this. Look forward to it. The thing is, here's, here's why I think that this is like a Schrodinger's cat situation. The author himself says that Ferris is a guy. Ferris is just someone who cross dresses. The issue is, I think that Tape Nagatsuki is such a good author that he he writes all of his characters to have so many feelings and so many reasons and motivations to do the things that they do that he ended up writing Ferris to have like very trans traits. OK, so it's like the fact that these videos like the one Jake and Natalie have made, like these videos exist shows that it is ambiguous enough that it's gotten people to talk about it. And so I think the author was just like, okay, we're going to write this character. Um, and then the care, it be started become becoming ambiguous and people started wondering, is this character a girl or not? And by the end of it, he was just like, yeah, no, I don't want to mess with like trans representation. I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to have a trans character in my story. So I'm just going to confirm the character is a dude. And so I think that the author says one thing, but like a lot of the stuff within the text is very relatable and applicable to the experiences of trans women. And thus we have this situation where it's just both at the same time. And I think that we shouldn't just get too caught up about whether it's one way or the other. It, it, let's just say it's both. He wanted to try out. So now we know from the author that Felix is not trans. It's simply a guy that is cross-dressing. Now, some people will take this and say, well, we don't need to believe what the author is telling us because I can interpret it in my own headcanon way. However, there's more information that we need to look at. However, that is directly contradicted by Felix himself. In Arc 4, Felix literally states that he is man in both mind and body. Yes, so... This happens because I think this is the author's way of saying, yeah, I don't want this character to be trans. I'm just going to not make them trans and completely undo all of the trans characterization that I've put onto this character. This is the author's way of in the lore saying what was said in this statement. So this is, I feel like this is the author's way of, of saying this, but in the actual context of the story. Of ...acknowledges that he is a guy. So making the argument that he is trans is incorrect because Felix literally says that you're wrong. Even illustrations show that he's a guy as it uses the male symbol for him. So yes, if anyone says Felix is trans as a factual statement, it isn't correct. Um, another thing about the, the male symbol thing, something I just wanted to touch on. Listen, I'm a trans woman. I am a girl, but I am male. Like this isn't self transphobia or anything. Like it is objective that I am male. Sex and gender are different things, but the way male bodies developed because that's just how I am. I am male, but I am a girl. So I feel like it's kind of weak to say, oh, the character is male. Everything says the character is male. You can be male and be a girl. That's that's what being trans means. And I feel like there's a very big lack of understanding of this. Um, 
it's just it's just very hard for a lot of people who aren't trans to understand this this concept correct and they are lying to you i feel like this comment by coven moonshadow on natalie x hunter's video about this topic elaborates on it very well so here's a short summary of it i don't have an issue i don't have an issue with people who headcanon characters as transgender, but as someone who loves femboys and generally effeminate men, I still think it's incredibly disrespectful to think all men who are feminine, who are feminine dress in a feminine fashion are transgender. Astolfo is a good example since while he's androgynous, the appearance is often played for laughs. He dresses the way he does to improve the mood of his depressively mad ally. Ronald, Roland, I myself identify as non-binary, so I appreciate characters who don't completely subscribe to gender norms for one reason or another. Not every character who appears as the opposite gender is trans. I wish more people would understand that. Um, so what I would say to this is you have to prove that people are saying every character that's like this, that is gender non-conforming, is trans. Ferris is just one example, and Astolfo is another example. I feel like it's not every gender non-conforming character, though. Some are, and some aren't, and it's okay. It's just some characters, there's a reason to do this, and others there isn't. I, I don't know. Acting like everyone is like saying that all characters are trans and are just like trigger-happy with identifying people as trans i just don't think it's something that really happens and yeah that's that's about where i was going with that you with people who headcanon characters as transgender but as someone who loves femboys and generally effeminate men i still think it's incredibly disrespectful to think all men who are feminine or dress in a feminine fashion is transgender not every character who appears as the opposite gender is trans. I wish more... Yeah, I feel like this is just a straw man. I don't feel like there's anyone who actually thinks all men who are feminine. Anyways. People would understand that. This, in my opinion, is the most important thing to take away. I understand that trans representation is something that is lacking in the anime community. However, retroactively going back and identifying characters who cross-dress and then labeling them as trans is incredibly disrespectful to trans people. People- I... I don't know. I just don't think so. I feel like if there is a character who has a very ambiguous gender identity, I feel like we shouldn't be getting mad at people for thinking it's the other way than what you think. Like, I feel like this is really unproductive and this is what creates very bad, unpleasant conversations. People have cross-dressed for years. This doesn't make them trans. You see this issue in Steins Gate also, where people... Okay. In Steins Gate, I think that Ruka l literally is trans. <laughs> in Steins Gate, she goes as far as to, like, request time travel to be born assigned female at birth. That's not very cis. Like, this character shows extreme distress of being thought of as a guy. Assume that since Luca is feminine, he is actually trans, when that isn't the case at all if you've read the material. I've watched the material, and it's just... I don't know, when you time travel to change... to make another timeline where you're assigned female at birth, that's... <laughs> that's more than just simple cross-dressing. Another thing that I wanted to, like, mention for people that, like, aren't as interested in ReZero but like watching me talk about politics 
this comes from the Twitter side. Of course, it's Twitter um, basically saying this is just a crazy people thing. I honestly feel bad for Regulus because in one of the if stories, he tried to marry Felix without knowing he's a guy. Low-key homophobic, but whatever. Some people just don't understand these, the Japanese trend of traps. We see it all the time. Outside Westerners just don't get it. You will one day regret reading I Love Femboys out loud. You were right on Felix, but on Luca, and Luca intentionally used the phone wave to send info to their mother that would alter the circumstances of their birth, resulting in them being born with a female body. Yeah, that's what I said. It's Natalie X Hunter's video that is, has a lot more concerning comments, and it's a bit longer, so we're not going to watch it. Something that bothers me about this situation and others similar is that it always happens whenever a gender nonconforming character appears. It's like any character that doesn't dress the way their gender is expected to dress must want to transition. It's not always like that, though. There are a lot of people that say they don't care. Hold on. I actually took a screenshot. I took a screenshot of a comment that was like a bit sus on this video that Natalie liked. It seems like the ones concerned about labels like trans, in quotation marks, are far leftists that are desperately waiting to call someone a racist. As a far leftist, it doesn't make me feel good to have to call someone a racist. It, it's very bad. I, I'm not, like, searching for that. So there's that. All of my friends are on the conservative side. I'm sorry for you. That sounds horrible. All of my friends like Felix. I don't get why some people are so hung up on labeling other people, especially anime characters. Yeah, this, this, one, this one has me feeling some type of way, for sure. Same thing happened to Astolfo. It's pretty annoying how trans people try to appropriate characters and change them to suit their own emotions, which they also tend to say is bad when it comes to any other form of appropriation. Some people see Astolfo as non-binary just because of how ambiguous Astolfo is about his gender. It's fine. It, it really doesn't matter. This isn't, like, hurting anybody. It's not, like, why are you getting annoyed by this? Are people really this desperate for representation nowadays? Felix is a cross-dresser, and he accepts that he's a man. It's just one detail that you really shouldn't overthink. Listen, representation's really good. And when people see something and they think it's representation, like, why does that have to ruin your day? I just don't... I'm just not really getting it. There are just some comments in here that just make me feel a bit yikesy about these creators communities i guess this was like my take on this as someone who actually is trans and relates so much to the character ferris argyle people are so vehemently trying to take such a thing away from people or at least that's what it feels like so 